Yeah, so here we have Rockford. Hey, buddy. Yeah, I have a dog called Rockford. That is awesome. <laughs> G'day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> awesome. They're so sick, eh? Yeah. Oh. Guess I better get started on what I came here to do. Amplify repairs. Right then. So, the main reason that I have been sent over here to Upside Down Barbecue World is um, Sundown 7500 Ds. Sundown 7500. Oh, they're in the other workshop. So yeah, like I said, I've been flown out here to Australia um, to repair Brad's four 7500Ds from his Vito, which is an absolute freaking monster. God damn, I only heard it on one amp. Um, I can't imagine what it's going to sound like with all four. Uh, so yeah, essentially, that was the main reason that I'm flown out here, because they need to repair it pretty quick. However, there are a bunch of other amplifiers here as well that aren't an urgent repair, and uh, but that we can get running as well. So this little room that he's got here is a little place to keep some bits and pieces, audio amplifiers, subwoofer boxes, like the you know the boxes the subs came in, just yeah, audio stash room essentially. And what we've got here is there are three eight and a half k boards. These are all Zenon amplifier boards. Two of them are identical. One is a different style, different model, different board layout. And uh, let's have a quick look at these here. So these two son of a bitches on the floor here, these are the bigger variations. As you can see, the power supply runs six push-pull transformer sets. And the output section is four amplifiers in parallel so you've got four irs 21844s drive ic's which are in their own right um driving a half bridge amplifier and there's four half bridge amplifiers that then all parallel together on the output section after the inductors so this is the bigger of the zenon 8k board that we have here the final one is a slightly smaller version it's still rated for uh, i think it's rated still the same eight and a half k uh, but as you can see we only have four push pull transformer sets and we have two half bridge amplifiers that then parallel after the inductors on the outputs here so uh, these ones will be higher current just generally higher more badass shit going on you know for those of you that want to do the 0.5, 0.25 burps, etc. These are going to be the ones that do that. This would be this would be fine for a daily 8.5 uh, system wire to 1 ohm. And uh, Or if you're running very efficient subwoofers like the DDZ4s or Z3s or 9.5s or pretty much any DD fucking woofer, um, this will also be fine at 0.5. No, no dramas. So the visual inspection here, this is the smaller 8.5k. Uh, yeah, very blown power supply. You've got obviously the, the scorch marks there from where the FETs have shed their guts, all the smoke marks on the PCB there. Um, so obviously a power supply failure, total power supply failure. Um, I think that this also took the drivers out from what I remember seeing. Uh, so yeah, the drivers on this one are way over here by the terminals, same as on the ground zero 8.5k. Um, they don't show any visual signs I can see here of damage, but if the power supply went down like this, they probably are fucked. And the power supply most likely got brought down by um, the fact that the outputs failed on these. Um, yeah, it's not that common to see a power supply die of its own accord. Either one of the transformer windings shorts out and blows the power supply fets, or the output section itself fails and pulls the power supply down with it because it's trying to drive a short across an output fet. It's a similar story with the bigger 8.5k boards, although not quite as dramatic, uh, but I imagine we'll probably still have to replace all of the power supply section here. Um, it's worth doing anyway, rather than trying to run mismatched parts, etc. If, uh, if the power supply did get hit, then you might as well just replace all of it, especially where I'm going to be repairing these and then going back off to the UK. Um, yeah, we want to get these pretty much in as brand new condition as we possibly can. Now these little fans that point at the driver board, they are a good idea because especially in a hot country like this, these drive ICs, these in this board are driving the FETs directly. There's no buffer between the drive IC and the FET gates, just the gate resistor to deal with the ringing. Uh, and as a result, these chips, they do run bloody hot, especially if it is hot ambient temperatures outside as well. Uh, they, they run really freaking hot. Uh, the fan will help out. However, what would really benefit with these amplifiers is a small metal heatsink 
pink little clamp thing on top of the chips. You could even run a an aluminium bar across and clamp it to the back of the driver board so that the, the so that the chips have some thermal mass to sink the heat away to. You could even then still have the fan there and it would run really cool and be a lot more reliable. These chips, they drop like flies. They just randomly die all the time, especially where you've got an amplifier like this that's running four. Uh, there's four times the chances um, of one of those chips failing than obviously um, just running one of them, for example. I actually prefer the drive circuit in the smaller of the 8.5Ks because you've only got two of the IRS 21844S chips and they are buffered by these transistors here before they go to the FETs. So the, uh, the actual drive ICs themselves aren't run anywhere near as hard on this style of design. Right, so yeah, let's go in search of these other Sundown 7500Ds. So I only really need one in the workshop at a time, but um, it would be cool to show you all four of them. Just trying to balance my camera stand here and do things one-handedly. Ah, look, the sun's come out. Oh, fuck. God damn. Yes, the sun has arrived. This morning it was absolutely pissing it down. So this is a nice change of scenery. Yeah, let's take a stroll down to the uh, the main workshop at the back here. This isn't the one I'm going to be working in. This is uh, where Brad works on all the vehicles, where the Vito is stored. The ground is really, really wet underfoot. This kind of feels a bit squidgy. I've got to be careful not to step on any snakes, or I've got to watch out for the drop bears from the trees as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, apparently the snakes fall from the trees as well, which is uh, a little bit scary. I'm not going to lie. Oh, it's such beautiful weather. Oh, I would love, I would just love to have this this kind of vibe in the UK with the weather and the space. This is absolutely fantastic for working on shit. So yeah, there she is, the infamous Vito with the four uh, Rockford Fosgate 19s. Uh, they're actually, if you compare them to other brands, woofers sizing, they are 21s. So this essentially has four 21s in it. Rockford call them 19s because Rockford go by cone or piston area rather than diameter of basket. But if you compare these Rockford 19s to, for example, um, the Digital Designs 9921 or uh, Def Bonds or any other 21 inch woofer, um, these Rockfords actually still have more piston area than most other 21s. So they have more piston area than DD9921s. Absolute freaking monsters. There we go, there we are. Yeah, so that's the, uh, there's another two there. Got a nice band of Viking 5K here. These are absolutely brilliant amplifiers. As long as they don't come with bad fets from the factory, these are absolutely bulletproof. Superb design in these. Oh, right, and so this, we're gonna repair this as well. This is a super old school, long ass, I think it's a 3K, it's an Australian brand, um, Class D amplifier. Let's have a look at the front. Uh, it's called US Audio Power. Um, Z, US Audio Z Power Bone Crusher 2. Yeah, that is a beefy freaking heatsink. That is very, very, very fucking big. <laughs> so yeah, two amps over there. Uh, the other two must be in the other workshop where I'm gonna be doing the repairs. Let's go and have a look. There's absolutely freaking huge power over there. It just made a noise and scared the bejeevus out of me. I was like, what the fuck? Parit used screech is a super effective. Yeah, so we should have the other two amps in here uh, or if not there's one somewhere that I don't know so on the workbench this is uh, the way I'm gonna be doing the amplifier repairs I've got a really nice workbench in here but this is how you're meant to flip and do it none of this bollocks I've got back in the UK with a music stand and some, some business tires and the fucking bit of MDF this is what you need so this is going to be really fantastic to work here I have got some bits from my workshop over in the UK we've got my AOUA soldering station right up in here because I, I really know how it works and also I needed the hot air station here for the drive ICs that uh, we didn't have here already. Um, yeah, we've got this power supply which is kind of similar-ish to mine. You know, you've got current current sent, um, or current adjustment, voltage adjustment, etc. Decent oscilloscope. This is like more of a digital one. It doesn't have a, a CRT display. It has more of an LCD display, but it's pretty accurate, pretty fast. So that's all good. This is one of the Sundown 7500Ds that we're going to be looking at today. It comes apart in two pieces, as you can see. Pretty handy. Ah, uh, there we go. There's the last one. So yeah, that's the that's number three and that's number four, or whatever it is you want to say. I brought my beautiful trusty foot pedal for the remote over from the UK because I'm so used to that. It's so 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 freaking good to be able to use the foot pedal to turn the amplifier on and off when you're working on it. I cannot stress how amazing that is. So, without further without further ado, let's uh, put this camera up here, get cracking with some repairs.